Hey, thanks for joining me today. After you watch this video, you'll know how to make the traditional pork dish from the Madeira Islands. This dish is called pork vineyard de Islish. So it's pork marinated in wine and garlic. In this recipe, I'm gonna marinate it for three days. You can marinate it up to a week. This recipe has two pounds of pork shoulder or pork butt. You want a pork shoulder or pork butt because it has a little more fat in it. You need a little bit more of that marbling because it cooks for quite a while. Um, so you don't want to stay away from things like a, like a pork loin or pork chop. One cup of red or white wine, one cup of red or, or white vinegar, 10 garlic cloves, two teaspoons of thyme, two teaspoons of black pepper, one teaspoon of red chili flakes, six bay leaves, a quarter cup of olive oil for the marinade, and about a quarter cup of olive, olive oil for frying at the end, and one tablespoon of oregano. So I'm going to start off by peeling and chopping up some garlic to put in the dish. Don't be shy of the garlic, it's in the name. All right, next I'm gonna de-stem my oregano and my thyme and chop it up. It could be a rough chop. If you don't have fresh oregano or thyme, you can use uh, some dry thyme and oregano. Or bay leaf or the laurel leaf is extremely common, and I would say that's and very important uh, spice in this dish in a lot of Portuguese dishes. If you want to have some Portuguese flavor, you always have some bay leaf around. Okay, now we're going to put together our marinade. I have uh, one cup of my homemade wine. Again, just about any wine will do there. One cup of uh, white wine vinegar. I would stick to either a white wine vinegar or a red wine vinegar. I think a balsamic vinegar would just be a little overpowering for this dish. It's about a couple of each of those. So, the wine and vinegar already smell really good. So here's my six bay leaves. Kind of just like a rough chop, because you're going to want to pull most of those out, because bay leaves never really break down. I have my fresh oregano and thyme, my fresh garlic, some red chili flakes, and the salt. And also, I'm going to grind up some black pepper. It adds about two teaspoons of black pepper. I have my pork shoulder. You can see these have nice marbling. It's kind of what you want. And don't trim any of the fat off this pork. It'll kind of render off as you cook it. And you do want your marinade to just about to cover your pork. So I probably could put a little more wine and vinegar in here. Well, actually, I still need my, my olive oil. So I'll put in some olive oil. Again, I guess the hardest part about this dish is uh, having to wait. You can see it's pretty quick throwing this marinade together. So this dish can marinate anywhere from three to seven days twice a day, just kind of stir it up a little bit to make sure all the pieces are getting coated. And it's well worth the wait. This dish is absolutely delicious. Traditionally, this dish could be served with a few different sides. Potatoes, some nice artesian bread that you have around the house, or that Portuguese bread recipe I made a couple videos back. Go ahead and watch that. That's delicious to go with this. Also, fried cornmeal, it's called milu there, and it's usually milu frito, and it's basically like a fried polenta. Over there, they make it with a white cornmeal, and sometimes they'll put in chopped kale into it. So that's it. I'll cover this with saran wrap, and I'll mix it maybe twice a day, and three days from now, we'll cook this up. Okay, our pork has been marinating for three days. Looks really good. Smells fantastic. Cook it in some of that its own marinade, just a, a little bit. But then as that marinade evaporates, I'm gonna add some olive oil to the pan and brown it up at the end to, to give it nice color. All right, we will put in the corn in the Irish. This dish is traditionally served around Christmas time. You know, they didn't have meat, pork all the time throughout the year, but around Christmas time, they would kill a pig. There wasn't a lot of refrigeration back then. They would marinate this pork and serve it for Christmas as a big celebration. So it's quite popular on the island of Madeira. Okay, 
Okay, the pork is simmering in there. Anytime you're cooking with more moist heat, it's called braising. So right now we're braising the marinated pork. In Portugal, it's also a tradition, once this pork is cooked, if you have a lot of this marinade reserved, you, know, you want to make sure it's cooked because right now this is obviously raw products are in there. Put that marinade in like a little side dish and the bread is dipped in there. It's delicious. So right now I'm gonna pick out any big chunks of bay leaf I see. And you'll cook this for maybe 15 minutes or so. I just asked my mom about this and she said her mother, who was born in Madeira, would make this dish and marinate it for weeks at a time. They would basically, same thing on the farm, kill, kill the pig. Basically that marinade was like a refrigerator. They would take a few pieces out, a few pounds out, and that would be dinner for this weekend, and then it would still remain in that pot marinating. And because of the acidity of the wine and vinegar, bacteria is kept at bay. And they would just use it throughout that holiday season. Okay, our pork's been cooking for about 15 minutes. I'm going to reserve some of the sauce. I tasted this already. It's, it tastes really delicious. Like I said, this sauce here, it's great for dipping bread or if you're cooking potatoes with this dish to uh, stir in some of this marinade over the potatoes. Um, if you wanted to extend it, you could add in a little bit of butter and melt it in there. That'd be making me drool just thinking about it. Now I'm gonna let it cook for about another 10 minutes. Now from the research I've done, quite a few people eat it just like this. When it's done braising, you just put it on the dish, eat it with potatoes, bread, the fried milu, which is like the Portuguese style of polenta. But also I see some folks, including my grandmother, would, after you take out some of the liquid, put in a little olive oil and fry it, and fry it up for a while to try to brown it. Kind of gives it a nice color and a little bit of a crispiness. And also if there's any fat on the pork on the exterior, kind of renders that out. I have some of my Portuguese moldecaco bread that I made in an earlier recipe you could see on my channel. Um, just again, dip it in that sauce and it's just absolutely wonderful. You can see it's starting to brown up, which is what we want. Gives a little bit of a crispy outside. Also, I think it's just more pleasing to the eye. And, and you're not gonna get that browning effect if you have a lot of liquid in there. Because remember, water boils at 212. In order to get that browning effect, which is called the Maillard reaction, it needs to get up to 285. So that is why you have to remove a lot of that liquid in order for it to get hot enough to get the browning effect. This turned out fantastic. I, I love the color, it tastes great. I'm serving it with some of the Portuguese bread called bol de caco. That's traditional to the Madeira and Azor Islands. You can see that in one of my previous videos. In fact, I do have a whole playlist with Portuguese recipes. And I'm gonna have it with a little bit of port wine. Wish you could be here to smell this. Give it a try, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for joining me today. Now go out and cook for someone you love.